just tested it. I didn't 
bring my Bible up. I forgot I was going to read one. So Judges chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. Now the sons of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, so that the Lord gave them into the hands of the Philistines for forty years. There was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had borne no children. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold now, you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and give birth to a son. Now therefore, be careful not to drink wine or a strong drink, nor eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from the woman. And he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. So this is the beginning of Samson's life, leading up to his birth. Um, so the angel comes to Samson's mother and speaks to her, and she goes back and she tells her husband that this angel had come before her, and the husband ends up praying to God, and he asks God to show him the same thing, to show him and Samson's mother how they are to raise this child. And so the angel of the Lord appears to Manoah and again to the mother while they're together, and basically tells Manoah what he had told uh, his wife about this child that they were going to have. About how they were to raise him, he was to have no drink, he was to not have his hair cut. Um, so the angel grants Manoah that request. So Samson's born, and as he grew, the Lord blessed him. That's what chapter 13 goes on to say. Chapter 14 talks about Samson's marriage. He comes across a Philistine woman, and he thinks that she is all that, evidently. So he asks her father, go get that woman for me. Um, Mom and his dad, what do they say? Are you, are you sure you want a Philistine woman? Can't you find an Israelite woman or somebody else other than those who are oppressing us right now? Um, so Samson says no, he's sure that's the woman he wants. His parents don't realize that God, this is part of God's plan um, to put a snare between Samson and the Philistines. So Samson and this woman are married. I don't know that we even get her name. Do we ever get her name in the Bible? I could not find it. So Samson's married. Um, he ends up telling his wedding party, uh, I'm assuming it's his wedding party, uh, a group of about 30 Philistines, a riddle. And in the riddle, he says that they can guess the riddle after seven days, and he's going to give each of them a set of linen garments and clothes. But if they can't solve the riddle in seven days, then each of them owes him a set of linen, linen garment and clothes. So he really makes a bet with them. Um, and he takes his bets very seriously, evidently. So for, for three days, these Philistine men try to solve the riddle, but they could not do it. So on the fourth day, they go to Samson's wife, the bride of the day at the time. Um, they ask Samson, I'm sorry, they ask her to persuade him. To tell her the answer is real. So she evidently does. Or they will burn her in her house. Or they will burn her in her house. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Um, so evidently she does a fabulous job of that, whether it's nagging or making him feel guilty or however she went about it. Um, she did a good job and ends up telling her the answer to the riddle. So on the seventh day, Men come back to him and they tell him, they repeat the bill and give him the answer. Um, and it makes him so mad that he follows through with his palm. So he goes up um, to another town and kills 30 men, takes all of their clothes, brings them back, gives them to the men that he promised, but he follows through on his bet. Um, you skipped. <coughs> oh, okay. You did not follow with my temper. <coughs> Samson follows her 
his bed. Um, he does give them each their garment of clothes that he promised them. But then what happens? What does he do? So he gets mad, he gets angry, and he goes back to his father's house, with or without his bride. Without his bride. Yeah, he does not have his bride. Um, and we're, I assume he goes to his father's house to pull off the scene, I don't know. Um, while at his father's house, at some point, um, his wife is given to a Philistine man who was basically the best man in his wedding, is what I understand. So his wife was given away. So evidently he was gone away for a, a good bit of time. That leads us up to where we're at in Judges 15, the passage for today. We'll read the whole chapter of Judges 15, verses 1 through 20. After a while, in the time of the wheat harvest, it happened that Samson visited his wife with a young goat. And he said, let me go in to my wife, into her room. But her father would not permit him go in. Her father said, I really thought that you thoroughly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister better than she? Please take her instead. And Samson said to them, this time I shall be blameless regarding the Philistines if I harm them. Then Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and he took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, and put a torch between each of their tails. When he had set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and the olive groves. <coughs> then the Philistines said, Who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son in law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his so the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Samson said to them, Since you would do a thing like this, I will surely take revenge on you, and after that I will cease. So he attacked them, hip and thigh, with great slaughter. Then he went down and dwelt in the cleft of the rock of the town. Now the Philistines went up and camped in Judah and deployed themselves against, against Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? So they answered, We have come up to arrest Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of his hand, and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this that you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. But they said to him, We have come down to arrest you that, you, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. And then Samson said to him, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. So they spoke to him, saying, No, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hand. But we will surely not kill you. And they bound him with two new ropes and brought him, in front of, brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily, against, mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and killed a thousand men with it. And then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey I have slain, thousand men. And so it was when he had finished speaking that he threw the, jaw, the jawbone from his hand and called that place Ramah Lehi. Then he became very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out, and he drank, and his spirit returned. Therefore he called its name in Hakor, which is in Lehi to this day. And he judged Israel twenty years in the days of the Philistines. So this chapter starts by saying later on, we're led to believe again that there's 
sometime between when Samson left his wife to go to his father's house and when he comes back to return. We can assume it's probably more than a day or two. But Samson goes to her father's house. Um, he comes across her father first, lucky for the new husband. Um, the father obviously thought that Samson would not be back and that the marriage was no longer valid. So that also, to me, gives us a hint that we're probably looking at a time frame of weeks or months, however long that he was gone. It was a long time that he was gone away and had no communication, evidently, with a Philistine or even with his wife. Can you imagine how scared that father must have been to see Samson walking up to his house? Um, he obviously knew how strong Samson was physically, but beyond just his physical stature, he also knew that Samson had killed the 30 men that he brought back um, the garments from. He probably knew, I'm assuming from the riddle, that Samson was the one that killed the lion with his bare hands. Um, so he knew Samson's physical strength. And now here he was, standing face to face with him, probably alone or with a handful of people or less, um, knowing what he had done, knowing that he'd given his daughter to this other man. Um, so you know that that Paul is probably just shaking in the streets. Well, we aren't we aren't told how long it was. We are told that it says that later on at the beginning of the week harvest. Right. And so it seems to be at least a season. Samson, as dramatic as his anger was over cheating on Beth, um, I'm sure that father and everybody else that saw him coming thought that he was just going to explode with anger when he got there. Um, so finally the father ends up telling Samson what he'd done and what does Samson do? Does he react? Does he blow up and kill everybody right away? Yeah. Somehow, uh, this man that we think probably has a bad temper, maintains his composure, um, seems to keep a cool head for the most part, given the circumstances, um, and instead of flashing out right then, he leaves. Um, why do you think he doesn't kill the father and his wife or whoever right away, or the, the new husband? That's something that would be pretty common today. Back in Bible times, probably was very common if he caught somebody cheating. Why do you think he didn't do that right away? He was strong enough. Maybe. Maybe it would be too easy. Be too quick. If he leaves, he knows he leaves and dreading whatever he's going to do next. Not knowing, just like when he left the first time, if he's going to come back, when he's going to come back. Maybe he knows what's going to come. Maybe he knows that their people are going to turn and come back uh, on him. We find out a few verses later that the Philistines do take care of that job for him and doesn't have to come back and kill him. Next week. So we know that females definitely can 
can be a weakness of Samson. The next part I think is, is very interesting to me. The Philistines then send an army to find Samson. How many does it say that they send? The Philistines send about a thousand. Um, we're left to believe it's about a thousand. Um, how many Israelites then? So the, the Philistines come, they, they come to the Israelites, Samson's not there. Um, the Israelites say, oh, we'll go find him. And then they get the 3,000. So it's 3,000 Israelites. Um, they go out looking for Samson. They go find Samson. They know where he is. Um, so if you look at just that, the, the Philistines send 1,000. The Israelites quickly can round up 3,000. Why would they not just go to battle? for their fellow Israelites instead of going to get him and bring him back to them. They have the numbers. Why do you think they wouldn't take that opportunity to defeat their enemy? <laughs> yep, so they, they're they scared. They, they know that there's more than a thousand. There may be a thousand there to buy them in this battle. Um, but they're scared of what might come after that. Um, so in the end, what they end up doing is turning their back on fellow Israelites. So do you think that these Israelites that all rounded up and agreed that they should go get Samson and turn him back over to the Philistines, do you think that they thought what Samson did was wrong, morally wrong? Um, do you think that they thought it was wrong in the eyes of God? Probably not, right? They, they, yeah, they were thinking of the, their worldly selves. Um, they wanted to protect themselves. They wanted to protect their families physically. Um, so they were afraid that Samson was just rocking the boat. And so instead of standing for God's people, um, they just give in to the enemy. That or uh, maybe they just had a <clears throat> uh, an attitude of non-confrontation. Or accepting the status quo. Uh, I, I think we see that today. I think we see it in many societies that they don't want to rock the boat. But, you know, things aren't that bad. So let's just, you know, I guess not act. Uh, and unfortunately, when you do that, you kind of get where we're at today. I think you're reading Don't 
turn away from God, don't turn away from God's people, don't turn away from God's teaching, just to prevent trouble for yourself on this earth. Um, the other thing I look at is Samson. Um, if you look at Samson and his strength, and you look at how much the enemy came at him, just because of his strength. Um, he defeats the Philistines that kill his wife and his father-in-law. So then they send a thousand more to come after him. Um, the enemy knew how strong he was physically, and they knew that he needed more than a couple dozen men to take him down, to kill him. So they send a thousand men, thinking that would be enough. Um, I think it's interesting they only send a thousand. So it seems to me that they know they're not going to get much, much pushback from the rest of the Israelites. So that tells you kind of how the Israelites acted for the Philistines, what their um, reaction was. So the enemy know, knew how strong he was physically. They knew he needed more than a couple dozen men. If you look at that, how does that relate to us? And the stronger we are in the Lord, the stronger we are in our faith and our deeds, the more Satan comes at us, the more Satan brings at us. Um, the more we defeat Satan, the more we overcome one situation, the uh, stronger he's going to come at us the next time. So that comes at us, I think, in many forms. It comes at, comes at us in the form of uh, medical issues, sickness, health. Financial issues it can come at us in the form of family or friends that are uh, caught up in sin, and there's really nothing that we can do ourselves to control that. And it also means we can do that much more as well, because Samson did. I mean, he was given the gift of his strength, and, and, and he used it uh, and did things that normal men couldn't do. So... Right. So he never gave up. Um, even after his own people turned against him, Samson still had the faith that God would take care of him. He still believed that God was with him. And even after his people turned on him, delivered him to a thousand Philistine uh, men, he still defeated those thousand men. He did what looked like it was impossible. I think we can count on God to be there the same way that Samson did. Same way that he trusted God to be there in this situation that he thought was impossible. Um, when it seems to us like we're up against an enemy today, and it's, it's probably not going to be a thousand men like Samson was, probably not going to be something as life threatening as what Samson was about to face. Um, but when it's our lives, when it's our situation, it's our crisis, it's a big deal to us. Um, so we have to remember that it is impossible for us the situation, but it's not impossible for God. Um, in Philippians 4, Paul is talking about having, um, he's talking about himself having both been rich and having been poor, um, dirt poor. Um, he says that even when he was dirt poor, that um, he didn't know how he was going to survive, but God provided for him. And that's where we have that Philippians 4.13, that verse that everybody today loves to use, I can do all things through Christ. Um, so we see this example of Samson. We see the, the ties in the New Testament. We see the ties of our lives today. Um, it's something that we can learn from. Anybody have any other thoughts before we close? Father, you care to listen to that? Lord, we thank you for the day you've given us. We thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for your word and the opportunity to study. Pray that you'll be with us as we meditate upon these things that we've learned today and put them into practice. We pray that you'll be with us as we go through the rest of our worship services this day. In your son's name. Amen. Amen.